In this video, I will show you how to use Midjourney to turn boring profile pictures into this. First, I will show you how to use image reference and how to tinker with the image weight until you get the result you want. Then I will show you the absolute best prompts for profile picture because trust me, I try a thousand of them so you don't have to. And finally, as an extra tip, I'll show you how to quickly vectorize and edit your mid-journey images using a completely free tool. For this tutorial, I will assume that you already have a mid-journey account and that you have some sort of basic knowledge on how Discord works. So this is my Discord server and I already have the mid-journey bot linked to it. So let's see the settings I have. So I'll slash settings. And I will be using mid-journey version 5.1 but of course, depending on when you're watching this, feel free to use the latest version. And I believe the rest of the settings are just the default settings. So first, to use an image reference, all you need to do is to add load your images. Let's say, load these two. Once you have the image load, all you need to do is open them, right click, copy link, and then when you start to start prompting slash imagine. And the first thing is to paste your image link. And after that, you can start prompting. So let's say in this case, male cartoon, cartoon, that's it. And as simple as that, you're already using an image reference in mid journey. Okay. Being completely honest, these results already look pretty cool. But before going crazy into prompting, I want to show you how image wave works because I promise when you start thinking with your own picture, you will find it really helpful. So to show you a clear difference for using different weight, I will use a different prompt and I will use male, but in this case, I'll use stained glass window art and the first iteration, I will use the default image weight that is one. Then for the second one, I will use a higher image weight. Then for a third iteration, I will show you how it looks when you use a lower image weight. So it's giving less importance to your image. So these are the results of my three prompts. And I love this example to showcase how image weight works because as you see the default one is just putting the stained glass art as a background. And it is not what I'm looking for in this case, but when I put more weight or less weight to my image reference, I can see that now my picture is part of the window art. And that's what I was looking for. And if I put a higher weight to my image reference, it's even worse. It's just putting a smaller window art at the bottom and giving more importance to my image. So when you start tinkering with your own pictures, sometimes you will find that the end result is not quite similar to, to you. So in that point, you will just increase the, the image weight. And sometimes you want it to have more emphasis on the prompt. At that point, just decrease the image weight. Okay, now they have some fun trying different prompts. And of course, I will not go through all of my prompts, but as I mentioned before, you can find it in the description of this video. And as a first recommendation, and you probably already noticed it, is to start with the gender you are expecting. If you're expecting for a specific gender, in this case, I always start with male. And the second recommendation is to try to keep it short when you are describing the style of your, of your art because the more text you add, the less importance mid journey gives to your image reference. So to show you these examples, I will use this female image profile. So I will copy the link and I'll go through the same process. Imagine copy the link and this time I will use female. And the first example will be Pixar style. Then I will do the same this time I'll use anime style. Third one, I will use painting. And for the fourth one, I'll use cyberpunk.
So after waiting for a minute or two, these are the results I got. Personally, I think the anime style and the Pixar style are my favorite. Look at this. I think this is a great balance between your image reference and your prompt. This definitely looks like a Pixar character. And the cyberpunk and the painting, I believe it took too much importance to the image reference and not to my prompt. So I think these two are a great use case to decrease my image weight. So let's do that. I'll copy this, paste it, and I'll add my image weight property, and I'll put it to 0.5, and I'll do the same the same for the for the cyberpunk. So after waiting for a couple of minutes again, these are the results I, I got. I think Midjourney did a much greater job this time. These two definitely look closer to a painting. And my favorite is this cyberpunk version. This is definitely what I was expecting when I put cyberpunk as a prompt. And as you see, using image wave is really important and it can really give you the power over the results you get in Midjourney. Now I want to show you two examples of using artist styles on your prompts instead of using the style directly. So I will show you two examples. One is in the style of Patrick Nagel and the second one in the style of Tamer Anuka and James Gunn. Um, I found better results starting the prompt with in the style of, and there you add your, your artist name. These are the results I got. And I really like these two artists because they have a very distinctive style. But of course you can Google and feel free to use a different one. Small caveat before vectorizing the image is that you always get better results having a clear background. So I will use this one as an example. I'll upscale it, U4. Then I will open in the browser and download the image. To vectorize the image, we're going to use this website called vectorizer.ai. And you just need to drag and drop your image or pick your image from your desktop. And as easy as that, you have now this image as a vector and you can download it as an SVG. Then I import my SVG file to Figma, but you can use any other software where you can edit SVGs. And now I will remove the background. This process can be a little bit tedious depending on how the, or the different colors that your background has. In this case, they have different gradients of blue. So I will need to delete them one by one. But I promise it's worth it because once you have the SVG without background, you can do whatever you want. You can change the background, you can add an outline and everything. Once you have your SVG ready, you can right click and copy as PNG, paste it here. And now you can work on creating a different background. You can do whatever you want. Also, you can add an outline. I can show you how to do that real quick. I use a plugin called Image Tracer. Here, you can adjust the threshold, but I think you just need to cover all the image that looks correct. And I'll place the threshold. Then I'll move this under the image, I'll select my threshold, I'll add a stroke, I'll, I'll, I'll add an outline, I'll make it white, and I'll increase the outline. And now you can put this inside a, a frame, maybe make this frame round. You can group these two, put it inside the frame, increase the size, something like that change the frame color background. And at this point, you can be as creative as you want. You can change the background, maybe put a, a linear background, add some stroke to the background, everything you want. And that's it. So I hope you found this video helpful. 
And please let me know in the comments if you want to learn more about image generation tools like Midjourney or any other tool. It's my first video covering that topic, but it's something I really enjoy and I really see the potential of it. So please let me know. See you on my next tutorial. Bye-bye.